Hello and welcome to 9.1 Notes. Today's topic is on translations. And a translation is a type of transformation. And a transformation moves or changes a geometric figure in some way to produce a new figure. And that new figure is called an image. The original figure is called the pre-image, or some textbooks also call it the object. Okay? And there are three types of transformations. Translations, reflections, and rotations. Today we will learn about translations. Okay, like I uh, said at the top of this lecture, today's lecture is on translations. Okay, uh, translations, reflections, and rotations are three types of congruence transformations. So again, a transformation means that it moves or changes a geometric figure. And of course, you know what the word congruent means, right? It's, it refers to figures. And it basically means one figure is equal to or the same as another figure. We use the, the word congruent. So um, uh, translations, reflections, and rotations are congruence transformations. That means it changes the um, geometric figure, but it doesn't change its size or shape. It only changes its position. So a congruence transformation, again, changes only the position of the figure and not its size or shape. Okay, so it just moves it, but it doesn't change its size or shape. Okay? And what is a translation? Well, the answer is, a translation moves an object a given distance right or left or up or down. For example, if you have a triangle and you move it to the right, that's a translation. Or if you move it up, that's a translation. Or if you move it to the left, that's a translation. Or if you move it down, that's a translation. You could even move it diagonally, and that's a translation as well, because basically the components of that translation are some units to the right and then some units up, right? So basically, if you move a figure in this fashion within a two-dimensional plane, that's called the translation, okay? And we have a problem here. Draw a triangle RST with vertices R is 2, 2, S is 5, 2, and T is 3, 5. Find the image of each vertex after the translation XY translates to X plus 1, comma, Y plus 2. And then finally, graph the image using prime notation. So the first thing I want to go over is the language of this prompt and um, this notation. So this XY refers to the pre-image or the object, okay? So say, for example, if it's 2, 2, then I'm, I'm referring to this vertex, x, y, in this case, would be 2, 2. It's of the pre-image. Then, to get to the image, you just add 1 to the x, and you add 2 to the y. So if this was 2, 2, then this one would be just 2 plus 1, or 3, and this one would be 2 plus 2, or 4. Okay. All right, well, we were interrupted with a, by a phone call there. Um, I think you heard the phone ringing, um, but I'm back with you. So um, uh, moving right along, uh, let's just um, graph. Let's just you know, follow this step by step. So the first step is to draw a triangle RST with vertices 2, 2, 5, 2, and 3, 5. So I'm just going to do this step by step. So I have my uh, coordinate plane on the x, y axes, and I'm going to plot R is 2, 2. S is 5, 2, and T is 3, 5. And then once I have all those vertices, I connect them, and I have my pre-image or my object. Okay, so there's my triangle. All right, so moving right along. I just move this onto a, a new frame so that I have more room to write. So this is all just copied over. And uh, now I'm going to do this part. Find the image of each vertex after this translation. And the translation is going from the pre-image of xy to the image x plus 1, comma, y plus 2. So we have point R is 2, 2. If R is 2, 2, then what would R prime be if I have to add 1 to the x-coordinate? Well, it would be 3, right? 2 plus 1 would equal my 3, right? This, um, hold on, this 2... And this 1 
2 plus 1 is equal to 3. What do you think would be the y coordinate of my r prime? In other words, what do you think will go here? And again, you can pause this presentation if you'd like and kind of work it out beforehand, get a little feel of what it's actually like in class. But for um, the sake of this presentation, I will continue. You'll get 3, 4, right? Because 2 plus 2 is 4. So similarly, with um, s being uh, 5, 2 of my preimage, my s prime is going to be 6, right? Because 5 plus 1 is 6. And what's my y coordinate going to be? Well, it's going to be 2 plus 2 or 4. So it's going to be 6, 4. And then if my t is 3, 5, then my t prime is going to be what? What's going to be my x uh, coordinate? It's going to be 3 plus 1 or 4, right? And what's the, my y coordinate going to be? Well, it's going to be 5 plus 2 or 7. So that's my t prime. And then finally, it says to graph the image using prime notation. So when you do that, then you get um, 3, 4. That's 3, 4. And you have 6, 4. And you have 4, 7. So that would be my uh, image. R, and it's called R prime, S prime, T prime. By the way, that's what it means uh, to graph it using prime notation. So in other words, if... Uh, the original triangle is RST, then in prime notation, my image is R prime, S prime, T prime. Okay? And moving right along, an isometry is a transformation that keeps the same length and angle measures. That is, the lengths and angles are the same for the object and the image. So if you look back on... Uh, this here, um, it said translations, reflections, and rotations are three types of congruence transformations. That is, only the position of the figure changes, not its size or shape. Okay, so going back to uh, this here, it's the same as this, right? Um, that the lengths and angles are the same for the object and the image. So in other words, if you look back on the first page of your notes, an isometry is another word for congruence transformation. So you're basically not learning any new concept here, but just that uh, a congruence transformation and an isometry is the same thing. Basically, a congruence transformation, or the word isometry, you basically have the same exact figure, the same exact shape, the, the same um, measures of the angles and the same lengths of the figures. Everything's the same. All you have done is you've moved it over. You've moved it maybe four to the right and six up or something like that. Um, you've translated it or moved it. So, you know, like moving a, you know, a, a box of books from one place to another, you haven't changed the size of the box, right? You've just moved it. Or... Um, moving a piece of furniture from one room to another, you haven't changed the size of that furniture, you've just moved it. So, a translation is an isometry. In other words, everything we've just done um, in this lesson, in this lesson um, is an isometry, right? The, these um, translating figures is an isometry. Okay, so um, we have problem two. I'm going to um, give you the prompt for this in just a moment, but I just kind of want to bring that concept home. That, um, a translation is an isometry. So if you could see, here's the uh, pre-image or object in black, and then here's the image in red, and this was a translation. As you can see, it's an isometry. It's the same size and shape, all the angles are the same, and all the lengths are the same. I've just moved it or translated it. Therefore, it's an isometry. It's the same size and shape. Okay? Um, so this problem, however, the prompt is, write a rule for translation for triangle ABC to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. In other words, write a rule of translation that goes from the black triangle to the red triangle. Okay? So in problem one, I gave you the rule of translation and you actually had to graph it. And this is going in reverse. You're given the graph of the pre-image 
and the image, and you have to write a rule for translation. Well, there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, you could choose any point and its corresponding prime value, so A to A prime, for example. So to go from A to A prime, as you can see, I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left, and then once you're here, 1 up. So it's 4 to the left and 1 up. 4 to the left and 1 up. Right? So that's basically the answer. So the rule for translation would be x minus 4, y plus 1. And then you can check that by using b, or checking b to b prime, right? And that should be the same. It should be the same rule for translation for all the corresponding points. So this is, again, 4 to the left, and then 1 up. And c to c prime, 4 to the left, and then 1 up. So that's your rule for uh, translation. That's the rule for translation. x minus 4, y plus 1. And now there's a, another concept um, in terms of, of how this can be done, of how you can describe a translation. You can also describe a translation by using a vector. There's a new concept for you, a vector. A vector is basically just an arrow that has both direction and size. So, in other words, if I have um, this brown arrow, this is a vector. And this vector has both direction and size. And the way you express a, a, a vector is through component form. And component form basically means you take the horizontal component and the vertical component. So if this is my starting point right here, and this is my end point right here, okay, it goes from in that direction, start to end, then I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the right, 6 to the right, and then once you're here, 1, 2, 3, 4 up. So it was 6 to the right and 4 up. So you would just go 6 to the right and 4 up. So in vector form, this vector is denoted this way, 6, 4, but, and you use these kind of brackets. Okay, they're like little arrow kind of brackets, I guess. So whenever you see this shape, then it means that um, we're talking about vectors. So, um, you know, a vector might be a new word for you, but don't let it, uh, you know, disturb you or, or get too freaked out about it. It's basically just an arrow, and the way you show the um, size of that arrow and direction of the arrow is by its component form. So 6 to the right and 4 up, thus 6, 4. So we can use a vector to describe how we went from um, the pre-image to the image. Okay? Then we can do that, let's see, by going like this. So there's my vector. Okay? There's my vector that went from A to A prime. And then when you check it, you went 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left. There's that 4 to the left. And then you went just one up. There's that one up. So in vector, if you're translating using um, a vector, then you just describe the vector like this. You would just say negative 4, positive 1, or negative 4, 1, and use those kind of brackets. So in vector form, to express or describe a translation in vector form, in this case, to go from the black preimage to the red image, you would just say negative 4, 1 in vector form. Okay? Alright, so moving right along, here's a, our last problem. Translate triangle LMN using the vector negative 2, 6, and this is, these are the coordinates for L, M, and N. L is 2, 2, M is 5, 3, and N is 9, 1. So let's work on this step by step. Uh, let's look at the first vertice, the first vertex, I should say. Um, we have uh, 2, 2. L is 2, 2. And we're going to translate that point using the vector negative 2, 6. Well, all that means is you take the x-coordinate, which is 2, and you combine it with the x-coordinate of the vertex, negative 2. 
So you basically just have 2 minus 2. So you would get 0. Okay, And then to find the y-coordinate, you have your 2, and then you have your plus 6. So that would be 2 plus 6, which is 8. And then you just do the same process for um, the other point. So for uh, point M, you have 5, 3. Um, what do you think M prime is going to be here? What is going to be the x-coordinate of M prime? I'll give you a second to work that out, or you can just pause this presentation. Um, but we have 5 and minus 2. 5 minus 2 is going to be 3. And then uh, the next one is 3, 6. So it's going to be 9. And so if m is 5, 3, m prime is going to be 3, 9. And then we have n is 9, 1. And we have 9 minus 2, which is going to be 7. And then we have 1 plus 6, which is going to be 7. Okay, so um, if the original figure or the preimage is LMN, and the, the L is 2, 2, M is 5, 3, and N is 9, 1, then the image is going to be L prime, M prime, N prime, with the points L prime is 0, 8, m prime is 3, 9, and n prime is 7, 7. Okay? And that's how you translate a figure using vector form. All right, um, that's the end of the lecture. And as usual, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact me at your convenience, and it would be my pleasure to help you. Okay? Bye-bye.